That brings me to part two. This Bashash study doesn't come out all by itself. It comes out in, uh, after we've had a very, very large number of studies involving fluoride and children's IQ, and I'd like to summarize some of those studies now. Since 1991, when I uh, first started, uh, sorry, I started in 95, but before I started, since 1991, there have been 59 IQ studies from China, India, Iran, Mexico, and New Zealand, and 52 of them have shown lower IQ among children in high fluoride villages uh, compared to low fluoride villages. In most cases, that fluoride exposure was from naturally occurring fluoride in the water. In 2012, a team from Harvard University headed up by Choi and in including Philippe Grandjean, who's one of the world's experts on mercury's neurotoxicity, published a meta-analysis of 27 of these IQ studies. Again, this was published in environmental health perspectives. Uh, the Harvard team acknowledged what most people have acknowledged, that there were many weaknesses in these studies. Uh, they didn't have all the information we would have liked. It wasn't clear that all the studies had con con um, controlled for all the confounding uh, variables. But some did, particularly the Zhang study, which I should talk about more in a moment. However, what the authors, what the Choi and others stress is that results were remarkably consistent. Even though these 27 studies were done over a period of about 20 years and done in two different countries, in this case China and Iran, and in different, many different geographical areas in China, by different research teams, they had a remarkable consistency of results. In 26 of the 27 studies, the children in the high fluoride exposure villages had a lower IQ than the children in the low fluoride villages. And the average lowering was a very significant seven IQ points. Now, fluoridation proponents have argued that the concentrations in the high fluoride villages were not relevant to water fluoridation in the United States. Uh, they are wrong. Here is a table of 20 of those studies, and the average fluoride concentration of these 20 studies is 3.52 parts per million, which is actually lower than the current safe drinking water standard in the United States. Now, to put the, those numbers on that table into perspective, New Zealand is fluoridated on average at 0.85 parts per million. Uh, these levels in which lowering of IQ have occurred are far too close for, for comfort. And also, when you try to claim, as they do, the, the comparing the concentration of fluoridation in artificial fluoridation, which in the United States is now 0.7 parts per million, to these concentrations, they're making a very serious mistake. You can't uh, it doesn't make sense to compare concentrations. What you should be comparing is doses. Compare the dose where you find harm with the dose, the range of doses that you're likely to get in a fluoridated community. Concentration is milligrams per liter. Uh, dose is milligrams per day. And so it, it's determined by two things. One, how much water you drink, and two, uh, how much fluoride you get from other sources. If you're fluoridated at one milligram per liter, if you drink one liter, you're gonna get one milligram per day. If you drink two liters a day, you're gonna get two milligrams per day. So what we should be looking at is a dose, total dose from all sources. And again, let me stress, dose depends on how much water you drink. So a child drinking, uh, say, a high water consumer drinking 0.85 milligrams per liter, as in New Zealand, could get more fluoride than a low water consumer at two milligrams per liter. Total dose then depends on all sources of fluoride, in dental products, tea, pesticide residues, and so on. 
And there's something else we ought to introduce, especially when we get into talking about effects in, in children, and especially young children, and now the fetus, is the dosage. And what the dosage does is to control for body weight. Uh, you notice, I think everybody knows, that a safe dose of aspirin for an adult is many, many times higher than the safe dose for an infant. And the way we adjust for that for the age difference is the weight difference. So you take the dose and divide by the body weight in kilograms to get a term called dosage. Um, so a same dose in milligrams per day will have a greater toxic effect on a four kilogram baby than on a, 12, a 20 kilogram child, and even greater effect on the, the fetus. So that, we have to add in that when we're comparing what causes harm in a study group and what could cause harm in a fluoridated community.